Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and today I wanted to make a video about 9.1 Torghast and all of the stuff that is going on here. So, first of all, if you're watching this this week, uh, you'll note that you can only do layer 9 this week, and actually if you mouse over these next three layers, they are unlocking one at a time for the next three weeks. Um, so you don't have to worry about, I don't know, whoever played it in patch 9.0 right at the start when there was kind of that mad dash to level up all the way through floor 6 on that first week. Um, doesn't exist this time around, just one floor per week for the foreseeable future. However, there is a new system in place in Torghast. Torghast has received some changes that are actually pretty important to learn and play well if you want to get access to these higher levels, because uh, according to Wowhead, you need to do the scoring system well to unlock the next layers. So according to Wowhead, you actually need 160 points in a Torghast run uh, to fill four gems of your Torghast score in order to advance the next highest layer. Now, I have a fairly geared character. A Guardian Druid is what I did this first on, uh, and so tank spec, maybe a little bit, I mean, in some ways better, in some ways worse. Ended up being able to get just barely that 160 um, points, as you can see here, to get four gems on a Torghast run that I did. Um, the scoring system is interesting. So basically the way it works is when you do your Torghast run, you can earn up to 100 points just from completion. Uh, so that is killing all the enemies, opening all the Ashen Phylacteries, freeing all the Soul Remnants. They, these things actually contribute a large part of that 100. Doing quests, whatever quest is on the floor, I think you miss out on a huge amount of completion. Uh, th there's one floor I did. Every floor, at the end of every floor, it will tell you how you did on that floor. And there was one floor where I missed a um, quest and ended up getting, like, way reduced um, score. Let's see if I can find a, a floor completion page to show you. Okay, I should be around here. Uh, yeah, so at the end of a floor, it'll tell you, you know, how you did on completion and, and, and uh, time in that floor. And you can even mouse over the time part. Let's see if it'll do that here. You can even mouse over the time, and it'll show you what the par time for that floor was. Um, you can earn another up to 50 points if you are beating those par times by a lot. My run, I ended up being right around par time uh, and ended up picking up 33 points. Uh, you can see here from time, so reasonably good. I was a little bit under par, I think. Yeah, you can see par time 22 minutes and I did 20 minutes. I was actually two minutes under time uh, and ended up picking. So I imagine you get 25 points if you're on par falling down to zero if you're way slow, and up to 50 if you're way faster than par. Um, but you'll notice you need to get to 160 to earn that magical fourth scoring point. Um, so the way you can do that is Empowered Bonus. That helps. Empowered Bonus is this extra action button you get. You charge it up by killing stuff, and then you can press it. And for up to 30 seconds, depending on how full that bar was, uh, you will go Empowered. You get a small haste bonus, you get a small movement speed bonus, and you get a leech bonus. But the main thing is any score you earn is doubled during that time. So if you can do, you know, 20 of your 100 total completion during Empowered Bonus, that'll be an extra 20 points, um, assuming you were getting all 100 of the completion points, which you'll notice I didn't. I got 88 completion. I, I like, missed half of one floor, um, and that ended up, you know, costing me 12 points there. So that's one thing you can do to get you points. But again, we're still pretty far away from 160 here if you're if you're not getting all of these that are available. And so the way that you can get up to that 160 point level is through these extra points. Um, so there are these different like named things that will give you extra points. Uh, some that I think are pretty good to go for. Daredevil, defeat two elites within 10 seconds of each other. If you're aware that that's 10 free points uh, doing that, good idea. Obviously, if you can nuke down the boss in 40 or 20 seconds, uh, that's a huge amount of extra points that you can get uh, nicely that way. It kind of naturally works out if you are doing full completion and you're on a geared character and you're on a spec that gets combinations of anima powers that can just eliminate bosses that fast. No duplicate anima powers. 15 points available for that one. There can only be one. Um, defeating the boss with at least 500 Phantasma remaining for 10 points, I don't think this is worth, but maybe if, if there's no good powers available and you have 500 on the last thing. Hunter, 15 points if you never let any elite reach four stacks of unnatural power. Popper, I did this one, no epic anima powers for 10 points. This is probably a pretty good one to consider if you don't see any good epic anima powers. This should be a pretty big factor that 
and when you see an epic anima power, you should be like, eh, is this worth sacrificing 10 points to pick up? Uh, but of course, then once you do that, you get to pick up any future epic ones for free. Uh, Pillager for breaking 90% of the phylacteries, but that's only five bonus points. Uh, Plunderer, open treasure chest. I don't know what this is. Maybe this is some... I, I haven't seen what, what these are. Uh, maybe this is something to do with the box of many things, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Uh, reinforced, if you, if you can collect five Obleron armaments of the same type, that's 10 points. So this is a good, you know, a good thing to be aware of in case you're getting close to that one. Rescuer, this is just doing a quest, basically, in Torghast. Doing, you know, oh, somebody lost their shoes or whatever, and you go find their shoes and they give you an anima power. Uh, robber, this is a good one. So uh, you can either use the many things thing to let you... So again, this is like the Torghast talent tree that we'll talk about in a bit. We'll let you get this five points, or you can use the Ravenous Anima Cell on the Broker um, and then get, you know, you get extra Phantasma from doing that anyways. Uh, so that's sometimes a strategy that people like to do on the first Broker of Torghast. Uh, and that'll award you five extra points now. Savior, free all the Soul Remnants. So again, full completionism, extra stuff there. And Trap Master, if you avoid all the trap damage, you can save 10 points as well. So... Armed with this information, armed with this little list here, uh, it's pretty easy to come up with a combination of things that will let you pretty safely get to that 160-point threshold. Uh, again, assuming that is required to ascend to the next floor. I don't know for sure. There's no in-game confirmation that it works that way because the later floors don't unlock until future weeks. Now, one thing that does unlock is uh, you get this quest to send you into Torghast that you will get at some point during the Chains of Domination campaign. I don't actually know when. So, first of all, maybe don't do your Torghast this week until you've got that quest. Uh, but that will unlock this box of many things uh, that you can get. It's in the Rune Carver's Oubliette here. And this is basically all kinds of things that will increase the Torghast experience. So, you buy this with tar tor Tower Knowledge, which has a total and a season maximum, much like Conquest and Valor, uh, where that season maximum is going to go up over time. And you can grind up to that season maximum at any time you want by just blasting Torghasts. Um, any extra Torghasts beyond the first of each layer, you know, the, the normal ones that would have given rewards last patch, will, I think, still give Tower Knowledge. And they'll also give Soul Ash, but at reduced rate. Uh, okay, so this box of many things has a couple of different things in here that are worth looking at. I mean, a lot of these are just kind of, you know, automatically loot enemies, big quality of life bonus. Um, beginning runs with fewer torments. The torments are basically affixes. There's a huge list of them. Uh, the run that I did, for instance, I had raging, just the M plus affix raging, and also you get feared when you drop below 40% health, which a uh, good counter to that is the one where you full heal when you first drop below 20%, that anima power. Um, but, you know, playing with fewer torments, that's a nice way to, to make that a little bit easier. Um, and then other important things here, if you're trying to go for the nuking down bosses bonus points, this is a big power for that, right? When you engage a boss, your damage is increased. Uh, Adamant Vaults, though, this is a big thing. Achieving a flawless run allows you and your party to ascend to the Adamant Vaults at layers 9 or higher. So again, flawless run, we're talking about 200 points now. But you get to go to the Adamant Vaults uh, after the boss, which has been moved down a floor. It's, it's just layer 5 is the boss, or floor 5 is the boss. There's... Uh, it's like one, two, three, like normal, where it was one and two, and then a, a shop floor. And then there's only one more floor, and then the boss floor with the shop again as well at five. But you can go to Adamant Vaults uh, if you once you buy this thing. And the Adamant Vaults apparently is a source of sockets uh, and conduit upgrades. Perhaps all the ones you need if you can farm it. Um, and so definitely something that is worth looking into. I mean, once we get to enough tower knowledge to be able to get down here. Um, and then there's just, you know, a bunch of, bunch of minor little things. Some of these, I mean, this, some, some of these things are definitely not worth spending your knowledge on. Uh, elites adding extra value to the empowered bar. I mean, that's a score increase. Um, anima cells dropping, you know, that'll help. Again, there's a, a score increase for getting 30 anima powers in a run. So once you have this thing, that'll help you get that. Um... Up to one time per run, you get to re-roll your anima powers, and I think this goes up to three times, so that'll be a good way to increase your power also. Um, so all of this stuff, you know, will make it so that you can get your score more easily further down the line. But for these first few weeks, getting those 160, and once we can unlock Adamant Vaults, 
200 point runs will actually be fairly difficult. Um, so that's a cool thing that's going on with Torghast. I actually kind of liked it. I, I felt like it was fun. It makes it a little bit less of a, you know, like that. now there is actually these, this kind of gradient of success rather than it just being this either you do it or you don't and there's not really any difference between a good run and a bad run. Uh, so I do kind of like that about this now. I'm still not a huge Torghast fan or anything. Uh, but that's what's going on with Torghast. There's also a bunch of new transmog you can get in there. Uh, again, there's the, the Floor 6 and 7 Admin Vault stuff uh, where you can find... Uh, I, I think you can find the sockets in there. Again, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, yeah, that's what's going on with Torghast. Hope this video helped. Hope you have fun in Torghast this week. Very cool. Again, you, you want to do those higher level floors to get those soul cinders, which you need for ranks 5 and 6 legendaries. By my calculations, it looks like probably the week of Mythic and the week after Mythic will be when we can like make those. Um, but we'll see. I don't know if there's going to be quests that give us some extra ones like there was for Soul Ash back in the last patch. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.